And we're live. Hello, 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 and and then welcome to the pre-show, ladies and gentlemen. How are you? Wait, I got a question for you, the audience. What do you think about Leonardo da Vinci's sleeping routine? <laughs> What's his sleeping routine? I think he just slept for like twenty minutes every four hours. I'm pretty sure that's why you can do it. I think. <coughs> yeah, we're, we're. I think we're like. I'm, I might be wrong about this, but I rem- I think I remember reading about this that apparently our bodies aren't meant to be sleeping in one stretch. We're supposed to be getting like Badger. naps or whatever. Mm. So you can do it, but you've got to do it properly. You can't be like, wait, so twenty minutes five times a day. Well, that's not enough. I love how you've just supplicated twenty minutes. I love how you just supplicated the audience for like your parents, like, uh, dad. <laughs> Yeah, that's all I do is just I ask you guys those life advice Digital questions. daddy. Big um, beard Paul is saying not good long term. Well, how long did Da Vinci live? He's I don't know. He's still alive now. But Short dude, the term. Seinfeld episode's results weren't fruitful. Kramer won't woke up in the fucking Hudson River. I don't yes, want- you do raise a good counterpoint. <laughs> yes, fictitious you didn't, <laughs> didn't work out for them. But you, you aren't... I bet you if you... Traced back your evolutionary <laughs> roots. You wouldn't have evolved from humans, uh, apes. It would have been bears. I think you're supposed to hibernate for mm. long tracks of time. That's very true. But I look, I would be interested so to know. Ali. If- <laughs> Ali's a bear as well. Well, Glackmate says that Da Vinci lived for 420 years, but I have a hunch that might be incorrect. Right. Well, yeah, you know, you don't know, so you're going to have to look that up in your own time. <laughs> <laughs> Jacob Burrito. J- Jacko Burrito. Supposedly, we're meant to get up for a few hours in the middle of the night, tend the fire, fuck your wife, etc. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think you just want to get <laughs> that one business. across. I mean, <laughs> speaking That's sense. So he's speaking sense. <laughs> you know, all those kinds of things. Uh, uh, <sighs> but who can get up in this day and age to stoke a fire and fuck their wife? It's just people from the Blue Mountains. No one yeah. else has a fire. What are they talking about? Turning the AC off? What do you I, mean? I, well, I, I guess so. I, I'm just curious whether it's actually healthy or not. Because surely- Everyone's saying that you can do it, <coughs> but it's not sustainable. Others are saying that it can be sustainable if you do it right. It can't be one hour, 40 minutes though. I think you need minimum five hours. No, that's not, no. I, I don't know. It's just, I'm really coming to this realization. It's such a waste of time. Sleeping. How how has someone not figured out a pill yet so that you can get a third of your life back? Yeah, it's it's so much. I want that lifetime back. so much of your life. the definition of a waste of time. It is. But what what about the fact that they say you need your sleep beauty? Do you think you'll get wrinkles if you stay awake? Well, that is what I'm scared about, and I will waste a third of my life. That's the only reason. That's the one loophole to his life. It's like this terrible, terrible thing that sucks. It's like, but- It'll give you less wrinkles. Well, then I'll do it unquestionably without even questioning you right now. I'm doing. I'm going to do it now. I'm doing it since you've said bye. Yeah. It's <laughs> but wait a sec. No I, time. I, There's no time for that. If I went into Oxford Street and some bear came up to me and said, "I'll give you AIDS, but I'll give you like no wrinkles as a result," like without even <laughs> checking it, without looking at the science, I'll take the risk. I'll, <laughs> I'll yeah, no, it's fucking. Go. You can live with right AIDS. Away. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. 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 <laughs> I just assume that that's where the conversation's going. Yeah, you can live with H- you can live with <laughs> HIV. You'll be fine. You're not even exa- I mean, hardly exaggerating. I'm this not. man's walked in front of me and Ali naked. He, he just we- today, I opened a door and he was naked again. Well, yeah. he was wearing his like very '80s underpants, which right. means that it just covers buns, your the balls, buns. not even your uh. penis, just your balls. Oh, yeah. yeah, nice. Get it back, boys. Fuck. All right. Do we have any questions for you the pre-show? You have got some tight buns, I've noticed. My hat yes, says Coca-Cola. Yeah, all that P90X. Hmm? My hat, someone was asking. My hat says Coca-Cola on it. Well, what did you Take think that. it said? <laughs> yeah, but well, if you don't use a red hat with running right. If you don't recognize it. that symbol now, then I don't know what to do for you. Well, there you go. There's so you, are you going to commit to the sleep thing or not? I would like to commit to maybe it. Maybe you should try it. Or maybe at least fix your hair. <laughs> Just a little bit. Well, I guess we'll start small. <laughs> Move up to the big wigs, huh? Dude, he hasn't got time for that. He's sleeping. Okay. Uh, um, yeah, and also I've got another question for you. What do you guys think about going up to five videos a week? 
Now there's know a, that Mislav's not keen. <laughs> That's Steve not true. We'll be doing most of it. That's not Marius true. Mules, I man. didn't say I'm not keen. The your your fucking primary editor, aka you know some old English actor, basically Anthony Hopkins, suggested <laughs> yes. that it wasn't the right idea because there's such thing as oversaturation of content. I'm just saying that's a possibility. I don't know. I don't know. I don't work at IBM. Quantity over quality? Question mark is a comment that was made by <laughs> Nick P five four three. Screw you, hey, Nick. Hey, you're looking at friendly Geordies. It's all quality. <laughs> <laughs> Tune in for Links Review Part Two tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it's basically a hypothetical question at this point. It's like you never know till you try. I don't know. What do you think? Do it if the quality is consistent. I agree with uh, NGV forty nine. <clears throat> Look. Don't you think in uh, David Letterman's 35 years on air, there must have been some misses. But I think that there was a reason that they were on five nights a week. And that was actually Howard Stern's big uh, kerfuffle with Conan O'Brien. He was saying, he was destined to fail. He was on four nights a week. It's got to be Monday to Friday. Right. And then he didn't give any reasons for it. But he... Sounds quite confident, so. Well, it is true. If you want to make it. <laughs> <laughs> like Jay Leno's r- fucking, you're going on him. <laughs> Fuck. But it, like, look, imagine if a channel like, I don't know, CNN or someone said, look, we're going to do quality over quantity. So it's going to be one video a week. Yeah. They'll die. Like, uh, what the hell? Yeah. Yeah, but that's CNN one. going from 24 hours a day, seven <laughs> days a week to you know, when something good happens. You know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So, oh, but man. but here's the problem: not everyone in CNN is a one man show. Like, you need other people to be appearing on the channel as also, well. Also, people aren't shooting into CNN, being like, "Got to see what's happening on a Thursday." Like, sometimes when you have an influx of content, it's kind of like, "I should watch that." Ah, he's got plenty more. Yeah, you know. Yeah, so yeah. it's that dichotomy of I'm not saying that that's the I'm not saying it's the right. Th- Wrong thing to do or the right. It's just hard to know. I think it's one of those damned if you do, damned if you don't things. I think. It is the eternal YouTube debate. I've seen this debate amongst uh, YouTube content creators a lot. A lot of them say um, that, yeah, you need to like just keep churning out material. That helps with the algorithm. YouTube likes consistent uploads rather than infrequent ones. And then there'd be other ones that would... There's other YouTubers that says, nah, that's all a myth. You just need to... Whatever you put out needs to be good and your followers will attract. Uh, can I just read Rave Brain? No, nah, don't do five vids. It would be great for a short while, but the hard hitting content we all enjoy, like going to Brothers House, will be harder to make with the Titan schedule. It's not necessarily true. There are more people involved. Jordan does the heavy hitting, all those big ones. Yeah, no, I think that's no one my, else that you know what I think thing. would be a nice mix? When there's a Brothers video out, that's just the only video for that week. And then you come back the next week and it's just like, we got a lovely show for you tonight. We've got two Estonian midgets <laughs> juggling uh, bowling pins. hi <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you could be right. I mean, I honestly- That's all I'm saying. I think that there's a gap at the bar in Australia for a Johnny Carson. Because what do we have? Rove? And he did one night a week. Jack 768757646346 says- the algorithm changes all the time. I would stick to what you're doing now until Geordie Industries gets bigger. Just, uh, but would it get bigger because of the five vids a week? Who's Doc? I don't know. Who's Doctor K on YouTube? You should reach out to him and get Jordan on there. Bit well, of exposure. Love you're loud, but I can fix that. <laughs> Sorry, I can't. I'm not. I can't hear myself. So, no, no, you'll be all right. Um. Now. Sorry, Jordan. You should probably be looking at these responses, seeing as you asked the question. I look. It's a, it's 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 a tough one. It's a toughie. Sky News is a perfect example of quantity over quality. I beg to defer. Quantity <laughs> over quality. Only Sky when Chris News Kenny is John. amazing. Um, yeah, I don't know. Oh, I need uh uh Ali on OnlyFans. No, I'm not on OnlyFans, and I don't think I'll ever be on OnlyFans. Dude, I'm on OnlyFans. Only Miss Love. But I don't know how to log in to my account. And apparently I got money in there, which I need it. I, I need that money. I really do. So if anyone could tell me how to get into my own account, that'd be swell. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So got any intel? There's no- well, look, someone was saying do more Roman history. And I was thinking of making yeah. one of those episodes a week. 
That's that would so be amazing. Bro. That, but would give a sick. teaser on the main pod because I really want to hear about what you're reading right now. And actually, a lot of the audience does too. You gave a teaser during the main pod last week about why um, what constitutional monarchies are better. And you said that you were going to do it in the uplay, but then we forgot about it. And a lot of the segments were... <laughs> we just hey, talked about our porn habits. Jesus usual. Christ. But uh. by the way, by the way, one of the most popular uh, uplay uh, pods we've done. What? Not right. <laughs> you people Not are lying. pigs. Man, I love... <laughs> what is wrong People with love us it. And them. You don't get this on a, you know... Community TV, yeah, do but ya? you can like just go on Pornhub. <laughs> yeah, yeah this, this is why tapestry. Um, they're saying shows, they're know? saying do quality over quantity. How many are we on now? Three a week. Yeah, dude, nice middle ground. And four it's all quality. Yeah, but where do you put the fourth? So what what are you doing? Are you doing the Conan thing Tuesday to Friday? <laughs> it's and such get a canceled. <laughs> That's true. You got to three or five. Look, well, like, why, why, why stop there? Stig, Stig says that you are g- uh, genuinely stretching out into Kings and Generals content, George. And I would find that to be, honestly, the only compliment to be compared to those guys. Who the fuck's that? That's sick. It's the guys that I'm always listening to, and then you enter the room and have this like, oh, no, not another boring space <laughs> launch. Change the channel. Change the channel. <laughs> Can I do my interpretation of that? What? <clears throat> Ready? <clears throat> i got to get this right. Hold on. Get in the mood. King Arthur III used to go down to the Roman sector of Elizabeth Street just to find the commoners, uh, to find what the commoners wore as their slave garments. King Edward IV was quite the womanizer, as opposed to what history has taught us. His brother, King Edward V, being the womanizer. If you look at the scrolls, in the indexes, you can quite clearly find the case to be as I have stated, not how history has stated. Man, Keep going. people say that I'm encroaching kings and generals' territory. That's just another episode, yeah. except you have to say, and now to our sponsor, uh, whatever the fuck this <laughs> channel is. <laughs> Look, if kings and generals, like, they really have to start moving into what their territory is, which is me. It's just autistic young men, and they need to start advertising <laughs> Garana Doritos. All right? Bring it back. That's... <laughs> like anyone else that is advertising on that channel is wasting their time. It should just be gaming chairs and energy drinks. Absolutely. Yeah. And Doritos. And Doritos. Look, yeah. as long as it's got Garana in it, you can sell it. <laughs> I don't care what it is. Holy shit. <laughs> That's uh, how it works. No, look, I, I do like that show. I just think. Uh, Lance Muscles thinks that you should take Monday off like a fish and chip shop. Well, if anyone's called Lance Muscles. <laughs> Listening to him like it a fish muscle. and chip shop. <laughs> this operation, yeah, I suppose you're right. Let's just give it the instead of the uh, yeah, fish and Letterman chips, model, we'll go the hairdresser model. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, dude, right, you, our dude, new upload schedule is Wednesday to Sunday. The crazy thing is, <laughs> it would it, it, going to five would be doable in regards to the manpower. Jordan not dying. He can still do his shows. We've got a factory going here. So it's like, it is doable. I think people just assume that you get up, sit in that chair and kind of look, you know, sit back and just like, Greeks, rap with me here. And then me and you sort of, actually, uh, that is is exactly what I'm just (laughs) describing our lives. Sorry. Stop it. It's too many behind the scenes. (laughs) (laughs) What? What? How are we in our 30s? <laughs> we don't have kids. We don't have any responsibilities. <laughs> Just sit there and pay out other people's work on YouTube. <laughs> I just described a normal day for us. Fuck. <laughs> this is broken. Um, people want you no, to I'll do more Crowder and Ben Shapiro. Wait, what's it going to say? <laughs> oh, hey Jordan, do you want to address this or not? What is this? Oh, you probably can't. Ah, resurrect Yilmaz. Yes. All right. Well, funny you should mention that. 
Well, it's not funny you see because you mention it every episode, but <laughs> Uh, someone asked about Yilbaz. What a surprise. Mm-hmm. Um, and we have some news, which is that I have been scouring. The only reason that I went to my school reunion was to ask them, do you remember any other stories about Yilbaz? Yeah. I got absolute negative responses. It could have been the fact that most of them were doing coke on a toilet. <laughs> <laughs> but that usually makes you more chatty. Yeah, it does. So I don't know what their answer was, but, uh, you know, they had nothing they mostly what i said rekindled their memories i'm gonna fix the camera yeah and miss love was no exception and then whoopsie on wednesday of last (laughs) week miss love out of the blue says oh yeah i remember something (laughs) wait so you're gonna come out with a new video yes Yes. we're coming out with a yield as addendum because i fucking remembered (laughs) My own life. I just remembered like a pile of stories that I told Jordan. I was just like, yeah, that, how good was that one? Glad you made a video of Can that. Can we give a teaser to the pre-show dudes and girls? Uh, yeah, I'll give you a teaser. Uh, it gets ruckus and wild on Yilmaz Lane. Rare. Well, <laughs> exclusive I, content. I, no. <laughs> That would have to be the most inaccurate teaser. It is inaccurate. <laughs> Look, all it is is a teacher getting angry at Miss Love for the exact same thing that Yilmaz was doing. And because she's deaf, she didn't get yeah. angry. At there was a, there's a deaf teacher involved and it was all, it's all true. And I basically said to Jordan, I'm like, huh, how good was that? And then Jordan was like, you've never told me that story. Uh, I have a career that has been based on telling these stories and you, after being here for like a year- He's been hogging it. He wants to be his own thing. Didn't think to mention He's keeping that one story for his big debut. It wasn't even one. It's like a few (laughs) stories. That was like three. We have too much content. (laughs) Too much. Uh, Miss, you're going to hate me saying this, but Tim Chuma wants to know, what happened to the woman that wanted to get into Miss Love's pants? Oh, hey, which woman? Hey, <laughs> no, we all know which one. But here's I know the who thing: you're talking about I, I and I, I, she's a very lovely young lady that I don't know anything else about. And we'll, and good on thanks for all the support from whether you're from Timbuktu or Tasmania. We love you all. From the same. Adelaide, I've been looking at those messages. Uh, <laughs> you know, irrelevant of who of course, yes. sends. You know, whether it's a angry person or a happy person or. A, Love everybody, don't we? I was be- yeah, we do. But I really have to put my foot down on this whole Miss Love saying, oh, I don't know if I should be dating this woman. She's a little young. How old? 27. I, I-, I don't know if that's where-, where I should be going. <laughs> I never said- it- What is it? He just what wants woman? to date mums. That's it. <laughs> what the hey, hell what's are the you cut talking off? about? Sorry? What's the cutoff? Yeah, what is the cutoff for you? Because you are a YouTuber, it should be 12, but it's older than that. <laughs> oh, fuck! <laughs> hey, hey, Panthera, Panthera, hey, Panthera. Panthera. Well, look, Panthera. come on. At we least all he hasn't know got the blackface on today. Uh, <laughs> no, no, I don't, look, I don't know how to answer that. I actually don't know the answer to that. I was talking about someone the other day. I'm like, what, what is the acceptable? I don't know. I don't Well, for our, uh, what's the formula? It was like- um, Seven years. Yeah, no, uh, half plus seven. Half plus seven. Yeah. So Miss Which Love, made Mrs. 15, 22. 22. Right. That sounds about right. What do you think about dating a 22 year old? I, I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know that much about Yu-Gi-Oh, you know? <laughs> oh, <is> that- <laughs> They're not men. <laughs> well, what the hell do 20 year old not girls like? Straight men. <laughs> <laughs> that's, not your, that's not your bad. <laughs> well, that- <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? What a twenty-two-year-old girl. What are they into? Lip smackers. <laughs> we Look, have I, I don't. I don't. Um, <clears throat> I don't think that you're really like. Uh, look, I, I just think that you should extend Ooh. the women you're dating to uh, women that have kids that do like Yu-Gi-Oh. Okay, so I'm gonna have to interrupt you. Sorry, this has to come out. Uh, Young in Stick says, "I'm 23, Miss Love, come around." There we go, another one. 
There we are. Who is this? Like, all right. So the straight young male is your dinner. I didn't know that. Oh wait, that must be a straight young male. Must be. I thought it was another woman. Uh, Hey, Ali, you got your wish. We we have a dating show. You're always talking about it. Now we're here. Why does Ali look like a right wing conspiracy theorist? I'll tell you why. (laughs) Because me and because me and him have fully switched places. Well, (laughs) the the transformation's complete. Because the segment that I want to talk about is going to make me sound like one. (laughs) That's true. Um, He is. He is a right wing conspiracy theorist. I am not. But okay, here's the thing: the hat (laughs) is a style statement, Mm. but this vest. (laughs) My girlfriend made me this vest. True story. So sweet. What happened to you, man? You no, used to look this. like some Persian player. I love and it. Now you just look, look like this. any other schmo in man. No, no, the Persian's hiding hey, under. Look, the insight Ooh. is actually pretty cool too. Yeah, I, I think it's very. There you go. Very. You hip. know that if that was in a store, that'd sell for like hundred and fifty bucks. Yes. That's uh, a stretch. But I am not paying that kind you of money. Okay. Well, I'd say it's enough. like a, I'd say I'd say they get hey, for a cool she's eighty. Listening, all right. So don't no. be too hard. Cool no, I am not being harsh on that. It's cool yeah, eighty bucks. This being harsh on it. Eighty I'm, bucks. That's cool. Cool eighty to eighty five. Ooh, I'm putting it there. All right. Well, someone just said, by the way, why is Jordan so high up? He looks like Christopher Reeves. Who's Christopher Reeves? <laughs> Superman who got his spine destroyed. <laughs> that's so brutal. <laughs> Oh, it's so funny. such psychos, all of you. <laughs> so much pain out of me. Well, Ali, Ali is Ali Yemeni <laughs> light. <laughs> Ali Yemeni light. <laughs> Nailed Fuck. you, birdie. Um, oh, okay, so look, are, are there any questions or is just paying me out? Like, <laughs> no, are no, we no, going to no. get we any pre-show <laughs> questions today? Christopher Reeves was, was based. <laughs> Was he? I don't know. He, he couldn't talk. Are you just thinking about that South Park episode where he was eating placentas? Or he, 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 was he like that in real life? <laughs> they said, take your hat off. You look like Gavin McInnes. I know. No, that's why you keep it on. Well, no, I can't because like my hair's all fucked up. I'm going to have to tie a man bun. No, actually, look, it pains me to be nice to you, Ali, especially seeing as everyone else is paying you out. But your hair looks very nice today. What? I like <laughs> it all wavy. Really? Well, no, it's You know what's amazing? You know what your style is? Dude, I'm telling you now, it is not looking like someone who grew up in the eastern suburbs, which is what you're always going for. I'm not going for that. Hat (laughs) hair suits this man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. You think this is bad. How about this? No, not the bag. No, not the bag. We don't need a Pakistani Fred Durst. (laughs) (laughs) The Russian one was enough. Not the bag. Now, tell me. So things could be worse. So yeah, shut the could. fuck up. <laughs> switch it back. Oh, fine, switch I'll it back. No, 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 no. Keep that, it on. You reckon hat hair? Yeah, he looks dre- yeah dreamy. What yeah, it's cool. Yeah, fuck yeah, dude. Yeah. All right. I fine. reckon just don't wear. Like, I know you spent a lot of money on that hat, but I think you should put it. <laughs> oh, well, actually, I, I think I don't even know how much it was. I didn't pay for it. Didn't you? No, no, no. I, my girlfriend paid for it. All oh, right. That's ve- yeah, yeah, your very sweet. <laughs> Basically the same thing. I would. They're keen. They're into you. All right. Um, is that Joe Rogan? Well, where's the fucking question? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is the time where you're supposed to ask stuff. Okay. Why do you think Labour focusing on Queensland for the upcoming federal Wow, you really need to learn how to write. But <laughs> sorry, sorry. No, no, don't, don't address it. If you can't well, write from Queensland, that's the rules. If you can't type, you don't get a fucking answer. Sorry. Yeah, <clears> you <throat> blew it for everyone. You blew it for everyone, <laughs> whoever you are. <laughs> <laughs> well, Is you, you just, just answer it. Gone. But we are going to talk about we because I genuinely want to get your take on the hundred by election thing. So we're going to talk about it on the main pod. So maybe we can tie it into that. Uh, sponsored by Coca-Cola. No, we are not. But if Coca-Cola, you're listening, at least just give us drinks. We take that. I don't want we? Coke. Uh, is Diet it Coke. that much of a stretch for Coke? Don't Coke give out free drinks Everything. to vendors in third world countries? <laughs> Pretty <laughs> much. They get it's sponsored by water. Coke. They are the Tyrell Corporation. They own the world's water. They should, there should be Coke Actually, from the bubbles. Actually, that's true. I don't want to give Coke advertisement for no reason. Dude, there should be Coke from the bubbles. Now now you're giving Fred (laughs) Durst hats free advertisement. (laughs) All right. Well, if you're not going, I'm going to give the good people at Optus Phones free advertisement. Here we go. All right. There you go. Okay. Here we go. Listen, this is a good question. Cal Merck. 
Carby. Here's uh, I run a small research and development company. I want to know what you guys want to see made in Australia. No wrong answers all the way from robotic industrial arms to flood prevention devices. What do you guys want to see made? In Australia? Movies and TV shows. You know what I think? Uh, clothes. Please, no. Clothes. We don't Why? That. Okay, it's- look, Raymond is amazing, but can we get something else as well? <laughs> all wrong answers, but Screen Australia. Yeah, we just start a new body. You know, he might be right if we can start a whole new wing of like- Australian uh, film and TV because Screen Australia is so in- yeah, I'm not even commercially run art would be good. Yeah, I yeah that's what I think mean. That this is something. This is one of my cancelable opinions, but I really Pantera. don't think that the government should be paying a cent to us. Hey, change the camera angle. <laughs> I know this is very controversial. But, that is a radical opinion. Okay, though. you can talk about this because it's a pre-show. It's not going to go out. But why? <laughs> why? But that is a radical opinion because. All of it sucks. Uh, it's just not a little all. Ponzi scheme. You know what it is? Not all. It's an extravagant doll for rich kids that don't <sighs> want to get a job. That's oh, all. Oh, Screen that Australia gets is Screen but Australia. What about like Channel theater, Nine and like the stuff keep that they going? Huh? Agree. But I do have the same opinions of it as Homer Sibs that I think it is just a beer wearing a fist <laughs> driving around in a go kart. Mm-hmm. <laughs> hey, if that was art, yeah, that you could pay, that should get a billion dollars a year instead of the ABC. But Fuck. we don't live in an ideal world. Shit. All art funding goes to knobs who aren't artistic to begin with. Yeah. The people that actually are that artistic go out on themselves. Actually, Michael Cusack was talking about this. When he was with the ABC, he had all of these restrictions on what he could make. The budget was was terrible and he made the show that he was most ashamed of um as soon as he went out to a commercial network so many free reigns of what he could do he got to make exactly what he wanted to make and he had the budget to do it it's mm. not comparable well it seems like abc care about everything other than ratings <laughs> like that's the only thing they're like eh, don't worry about that but everything else matters yeah Except but, for when they lose favour in someone and then they say, your show isn't rating that well. None of your shows are rating that well. That is true. Yeah. Like, uh, uh, I'm uh, sorry. Uh, what, about, so much, so, what, what about, about Hamish uh, McDonald's uh, 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 Quanda? Do you know that yeah. that got 7,000 views the other night? Yeah, it's bad, isn't it? Oh, uh, yeah, it is bad. Well, those are that, bad that views. That is yeah. a That's show a really that used bad. to rival Desperate Housewives. Hey, Shit. what's his name? Uh, Remember when we were in school how big a deal it was? That Q&A was like... The height of intellectualism. It used to be good, dude. I would and watch chases. it religiously when um, ah. Tony was on it. I yeah, would Tony. watch it from like 2013 to 2015. I watch Q and A religiously every Monday night. The chases yeah, was you're cool. right. And then there was that part in about 2016 where Tony Jones thought, "All right, welcome back to milking it with Tony Jones." <laughs> <laughs> but what's uh, you know what? I was watching it the other night and uh, Luke can't remember his last name. Yes, the intellectual that we all need. It, but w- what's your opinion on him? Because Who? I say this because he was trying to explain uh, in his own way uh, certain economic truths and he was getting like um, hammered by everyone else on the panel because he was Sorry. basically saying that uh, oh, we've got infinite amount of money. He didn't mean it in terms of like we can just spend whatever we want, but like in terms of the whole debt Situation. Yeah, see, he's the kind of prick that is hey, like, hey, I'm hey. well read. Like, <laughs> I've read books at the airport, such as the Jefferson myth. <laughs> look, yeah. I changed the game. game. But, but, like, but he, let's look. Is he is he big? Is he big or is he if 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 he's big, then go ahead. But if he's not that big, then there's no point paying him out. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he's one of these people that is just like, why do you have a job again? Oh, because you're a ginger. That's why. Sorry, we oh, just need geez. to. Oh, is this that guy? Too I many hate hot that takes. guy. That guy sucks. Are we talking about the comedian? Yeah, yeah he's a comedian. But you know what? Show. He's he's not really a comedian because you that know, guy. You know who was funnier dude. than him? Well, not funnier than him, but he was with Barnaby Joyce, and they were having a, a beef on air. And I hate to say this, look, look, I, I'm rooting for you. I was agreeing with pretty much whatever you're saying, but Barnaby was way funnier than you, and he's yeah. a politician. Yeah. It's always the case. He was, he was well, roasting is a funny him, bastard, and, though, and like. Luke didn't have any responses to it. I was like, oh, fuck. You should have some, because you're that's your job. Mm. So that was a bit depressing. That So I don't think he's a comedian, but he was no, like no, in he, every man's voice on that podcast, on that uh, show. I think if it's who I'm thinking of, he... Uh, <coughs> he Re- regards himself as a comedian and um don't do that bud what 
Yeah, he's not a. He regards yeah, he wasn't, himself. He wasn't funny. I think it also uh, don't regard yourself as a TV presenter either. There's a camera on you. <laughs> <laughs> is he on? Is enough. he on Charlie Pickering show? Uh, yes. yes. There we go. Oh. He personifies that sort of like I'm all the things that sucks about hips. It's scared, anxious. I hate myself. Like self conscious. I'm safe. No. Yeah, I'm very apologetic for existing, but nonetheless, can you pay for my existence? Very pale. Oh, I'm I feel old. bad for him. Barnaby killed him on you and I already I bet, look, I bet if I met him, he'd be a lovely man. But lovely people shouldn't be, that doesn't mean that you should just be in front of a camera. That's not, that's well, not how it goes. There is Don't there you think that. that The Weekly would be vastly improved if Barnaby Joyce was hosting? <laughs> <laughs> It'd be the same content anyway. It'd be funny. I mean, those, those, those. Uh, there's no doubt it'd be funnier. But like, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, so yeah. Someone, better. someone gave his full name. We're talking about Luke McGregor. Look, I'm, I'm rooting McGregor. for you, man. I'm rooting Conan for you. Conan McGregor. But you pussy. are, you are like. There is some way for you to be a comedian. We don't need <laughs> but to. But other sit than here. that, I, I I empathize with you because you got slaughtered on Q and A, and I feel bad. I think Jordan well, hammers the ABC enough for us to not have to do it here. But you know, there's no question, like. Dude, you, you know, but, yeah, but like, know it's so obvious. All of what you're saying is too obvious to point out, which is what makes it bad. Huh? Like whatever you guys are saying is so evidently true that it's almost slack to say it now. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> anyway, Come on. No, someone does need to say, I'm sorry. But Ali, are you as turning- As long as I'm paying for your existence, I get to pay you Are out. you, that's are you going to turn your face to injustice? Is that what you're going to do? And a rightful injustice of unfunniness. You're going to turn, turn and face away from the from reality. Yeah, but like you, I would be okay with convincing people of that. But I think everyone knows, like he was evidently bad. Can we get Charlie? Tigger so how was he an everyman? Well, because he was an everyman that didn't know. Because most people don't know shit, <laughs> and also most people aren't funny. So he's an everyman. I've got a video actually coming out about trashing the weekly, and. His video go. that just came up in my feed was horrendous. <laughs> and I don't think that you can pay that man out enough. Well, you should watch this Q&A because you will find a lot more material. Exactly. Yeah, it really needs to be taken <laughs> down a job, peg, you know? even though his entire shtick is that he has been taken down a peg. Yeah. He's like, Is that his shtick? Don't think it's just like, oh, I suck. Yes, you do. Why, why do I have to know you exist? The AB, yeah, that's the, the ABC trope. It's just like, I'm shit, right? But also everything's shit. Not everything. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Last, last question before we go to the main show. Talk about vape laws. What do you feel about the fact that I'm doing something illegal right now? Yeah. Right? yeah. Holy shit. Because, Don't say that on Twitch. Uh, these are illegal in... Uh, uh, in Australia. For all intents and purposes, for all intents and purposes, there's no tobacco on this and this is completely wi- legal. Well, no one expects to be tobacco there. They nicotine. Yeah. Yeah, right, but there's right, no right, nicotine in this. You are tuning in to a one-off New Zealand special mm-hmm. aired straight out of Auckland mm-hmm. and that's why we get to keep Look, I this. read one study about <laughs> vapes and it said that it was 10%, uh, it was 10% as bad as cigarettes. I'll take the minus I'll take 90. those odds. And also, these vapes, unlike a cigarette, don't taste like a rubbish bin. Hey, what the <laughs> fuck? It tastes first, like a fruit salad. First, Tim Chuma says, talk about vape laws, and now he says, shut up, shut the fuck up about vape laws. Why? How, how I much, don't know what's going on How much on is that here? a metaphor for the net, though? Talk about these things. Stop talking about that thing. How, how long is your attention span? Two seconds? Like, Yeah. Fuck. Uh, it's legal right now. You're fine. I don't know. If, I don't think it's legal. I think vaping is legal. I don't think but they'll lock nicotine you vaping is illegal. They wouldn't lock you up. You're like not allowed Jordan's to have nicotine up. in them. Does that have nicotine in it? Mm-hmm. Maybe. Mm-mm. Should probably stop smoking it. Yeah, I think I think that's probably a good idea. Give good in idea. to deliciousness. All right, you twisted my. Arm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we'll join you back after a break uh, with the main pod. Uh, so stay tuned. We've got a lot of juicy segments coming up. And we're back. Welcome to the friendly Geordie's podcast where, oh, fuck, I'm going to take the camera off of you, Jordan. Oh, wait, no, that's on you. Probably a good point. Dude, just the let him. segment is, 
why childish Gambino sucks. Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> what a troll! <laughs> <laughs> well, if you hadn't tuned in last week, he's vaping in his fucking chair. <laughs> it's so fucking perfect. Triggered. <laughs> <laughs> Triggered a bit tired. <laughs> Fuck. Well, if you don't know what we're talking about, we got some hate so for good. our childish Gambino take last week, and we're not uh, we're not retracting. We no, we're not retracting it. We and, stick and by every word, even though we kind of didn't know what the story was about. But <laughs> no, yeah, why did they get so crazy? Opinion. I was the one saying he's right. I'm like, yeah, Hollywood is shit. No, well, it's, it's because we anyway we don't want to talk about it, but. It no, but everyone's point was he wasn't talking about cancelling from SJW stuff. He was talking about shows getting cancelled. Yeah, that's what happens when they rate low. And that's yeah. also yeah. not that's true. What? It's also not the, what he was saying. Uh, but can it? we... No, saying it's we are not talking like, about this again. Okay, okay. <laughs> no one knows anything about Childish Gambino on this on this podcast. Okay, first segment, Jordan. Uh, thoughts on the Hunter by election because Look, I've been... Uh, I don't know a lot about New South Wales... Uh, <coughs> Politics, oh, Jesus. <laughs> let's just say. But um, uh, what I saw was the Nationals saying that this is our return <coughs> to the main stage, and uh, <laughs> and Joel Fitzgibbon has threatened to quit unless Labor mends his ways, which personally made me really disheartened because I was like, what he's essentially saying is, unless you destroy the planet, I'm quitting. No, Ali, sorry, you have read way too many ABC articles. Okay, so give give me give me like uh, what what am I getting wrong? <laughs> because of Fitzgibbon should, if he wants to retain that seat, he should probably run as an independent. Which he, he won't retain the seat anyway because you'll have the stink of Labor, and that's because you can't get one past the Hunter Valley. They understand who's a cuck and who isn't, and clearly Joel Fitzgibbon is. But he's he's out. He's not going to win that next election. It's not a Labour seat anymore. It's a one nation nationals kind of seat. But what then re- why is the why is everyone making a big deal about the fact that uh, Labour lost that seat when it's not even supposed to be a seat that Labour is contending for? Because that's what the press do. They were saying it's just a real mark on Jodie McKay's leadership that she can't win a seat that they haven't won in the last hundred years. That was her final bastion, and now she's going to have to go. <laughs> um, we report on her so little that we misspelled her name in most of the articles. It's the same little trick that they pull every time, which is, what, they didn't win a miracle by-election? Well, questions of leadership. Meanwhile, we did a video exposing the... There was somebody who is accused of child rape that was Iberogically in staff that was parachuted, obviously, into another government job for six months, got 250 grand. No reporting on that at all. When there was wall-to-wall coverage of Jodie McKay... I can't even remember it now, but it was just so contrived. She was accused of being a pedo-pleaser because somebody in her electorate you know, may or may not have uh, done something pedophilic. And somehow that's Jodie McKay's fault and she gets hounded by it in the press. And completely defamatory, the whole Wait, thing. Wait, why is she hounded by it? She's, the guy's not even from a party. Yeah, because that's what the press do. And I don't think that there is any chance of them winning the next election, and I'll tell you why. It's because Nine Fairfax is the silent Murdoch in this country. And I was listening to Malcolm Turnbull's, uh, you know, like, testimony in the uh, Murdoch Senate hearing. You know what he was saying? They were grilling him on the fact that he okayed the merger between Nine and Fairfax, which just consolidated 50% of the media into Costello's hands. You know what his point to that was? Yes, but I, that was a good merger because the, the press favours me. That's what you need to know about the divide of press in this country. It's just that the Murdoch press would prefer someone like Dutton being in charge, while the Fa- Nine Fairfax press would p- prefer someone like Malcolm Turnbull being in charge. That's the real difference now. And both of them are vehemently against the Labour Party. When you had 2GB sort of separate in that it was Fairfax and they were dying, so they just needed ratings... If you won the year of Hadley and Jones, you could win as Premier. That's what Bob Carr did. That's how he was Premier for over a decade. Um, now, there is no part By the way, it. who is a king? Just wanted to add that. Who? Which one? Bob Carr. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. a massive fan of him. I saw him live once. I've Bob been a groupie Carr. ever since. Well, let's... Oh, I say He's that not I really s- a king. He's a Premier. 
Yeah. Well, but yeah, and also like when I see when I say I saw him live, not a rock concert, like literally one of those talks where <laughs> there were fifteen other people in the audience. <laughs> but still, man, he, he like really wooed me. Mm. He's a very intelligent man. But sorry, besides the point, I've got mm. two mm. questions for you. But miss, dig, if you want to go this. first. Dig this. Mm. What's press backwards? Serp. Serpent. Illuminati, man. Damn. Boom. Boom. And Illuminati. to see the Dome Serpent. King, did they? Yeah. Fuck that. Next I need to level. Need that, Next man. generation. That's what Dome King also did. Yeah, yeah of course doing that. Did. And Serpent. Or possibly usurp. Usurper, usurper, usurper. Right. Ready to get your mind blown? This was the one time that he was on the podcast. Why do you think they call it spelling? Because it's a spell. <laughs> spelling. <laughs> I can't find uh, I remember that. No, he's really right. We do so need to replace this up with the joke. You can't replace him. He's the king for a reason. <laughs> so, yeah. So spelling's evil. It's yeah. just the, the height of evil. Yeah. Hey, I came to that press thing under my own. I just thought of that myself, but lad. <laughs> well, lad it was genius. Another flurry of high fives. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just wanted to give you one of these ones. Just so I'm like. <laughs> Do but you I concur? Good on you, miss. Yeah, good, good on you. Get great comic relief, thanks, miss. Man. Comic? <laughs> no, there's nothing comic about <laughs> that. You, what, what? I've, got a, I've got two questions. <clears throat> First question, you answer them in that order. Number one, is there a way for the Labour Party to get into power advocating for some action on climate change? And before you answer that second question, look, okay, the press is really uh, mean and everything towards Jody McKay, but the polling shows that it is pretty terrible. How can New South Wales Labor actually win? Is I don't there think that they can win. I think that they've... I've never seen them flurry over a politician like Gladys Berejiklian. I've never seen somebody who gets such positive press as her. Um, <laughs> the second point is, who are they going to replace Jody McKay with? No one knows any state Labor politicians apart from me. I think I know a couple of but them. But you know the inner workings. Is that, Look, we're not saying, look, we like Jody McKay, but is there anyone over there that you think has the chops, as they say? <laughs> I think Daly was given a hard run because pretty much Labor just chucked him out the last six months and said, okay, you're the leader now. No one knows who you are. Oh, everyone thinks you're a racist and you lost. What the hell was that? That was clearly your fault. I think that Daly actually could do a lot better in that he's very good at prosecuting a case. He's a pistol. He was a real disciple of Keating. He knows how to hold them to account in the Parliament. But it's my same point as the stand-up show. If you don't have the press on your side, you can't win. Doesn't matter who the person Doesn't is. Doesn't matter who the person yeah. is. Yeah. Okay. Uh, hey, come see it. The, live. Yeah, come see Jordan show live. But uh, in the first point... <clears throat> Is there, what I'm basically asking is, is the roadmap to a national labor victory trying to hide your position on climate change? Well, it definitely did lose them the last election. Climate change did? I thought it was the franking credits. That was the <laughs> overall theme that lost them seats, I suppose, that they should have gained in New South Wales and Western Australia. But what really killed it for them in Queensland was that Grange organised big rally about Adarno a week before the election. Mm. Uh, if you go and talk to the Labor analysts, they'll be saying that's the thing that really killed us in Queensland because that is exactly what the press wanted. They wanted something that is known as a wedge issue where the Murdoch press could go, oh, my God, they're not doing enough on Adani and ABC. Right? Oh, they love Adani. So either way, they're hemorrhaging votes. <laughs> That's why they got absolutely trounced in Queensland. So I think Fitzgibbon is right in that regard, but I also think that Albanese is right in that he can just suck up to Murdoch a little more. Don't worry about it. You reckon? Would Albert that do it? Albert just... can take it, for sure. Again, I think that we're all putting too much importance on who is the leader. Uh, in my stand-up show, as I say, Kevin Rudd was an anomaly, but I honestly think that Kevin Rudd, given this media environment would not be able to take it. The only way that you can win is if Murdoch decides that he wants to back Labor and there are signs that he's thinking about it. Even with the climate change issue? 
What do you mean? Like, would he still go for labor if labor was still talking about, you know, um, closing down coal plants? It just depends what weighs up on his business interests better. And the other thing is that Murdoch isn't particularly happy with Scott Morris. And again, he would <coughs> prefer that Dutton's in. And it's far easier to get Dutton in from opposition leader because all he has to do is do an Abbott thing of, they shuck, they just shuck, don't they, for three years. So he can win from there. But it's really hard to replace Dutton with Scott Morrison because, first off, he creates a huge rift within the Liberal Party. But the second point is that he's just not a sellable. I'm still, I still don't understand how to reconcile with the fact that we all know that this is an issue, but like recently I've just been understanding the magnitude of this, that Australia or like a lot of our business interests are, are trying really hard to resist action on climate change as much as possible. On the other hand, the world has recognized how we're basically moving towards a disaster. So I just don't know how we can sort of reconcile with this dilemma that like the fact that you don't get votes in the Hunter by election because you're tr tr trying to close a coal plant where that needs to be done. Like it, there's no two ways about it. How could you keep on this coal journey when you know that the world has moved on and not only the world has moved on, but we're looking at an existential crisis. Like it's, it's so disheartening in a way. Wait a second. Is this the guy that, um, uh, Jody McKay was he he was a late he was running for Labor but he was like oh, I'm not anti coal I am a coal miner but you know still vote Labor is that who we're talking about yeah did he lose yeah thought it was a shoo in he said he liked coal and he was an ex coal miner mm. what the fuck what do you want he's pro coal for fuck's sake this is the amazing thing that it's just like the Nationals are back why because we won a seat we should have won that's their argument. I just think... Wait a sec, but... but <clears throat> Okay, so basically the tactic was Labor's put in a coal miner who's pro-coal and everyone's like, yeah, I see through your plan, I can sniff you out. You well, only kind of like think, coal. Well, you don't like it as much as me. I like it more. Yeah. Yeah, that was a fair analysis. That's okay. much better than anything the ABC has been saying about it. <laughs> Look, Labour, I think it's also... It worked well, on they, didn't, they didn't vote Liberal, they voted Nationals. Basically, they're kind of pissed off about that coal plant being closed down. And it was a big coal plant, but on the but other hand, it, what option do we have? Like, I don't understand. But the, you, uh, What Labour... What, look, my rational mind thinks that, okay, I understand how this is an issue. What you could try and do is that you could try and set up apprenticeships for the new energy uh, system that we're moving towards. And Labour already did that. That's their election promise. I don't know what else you can do. Like we, what we can do is we can switch your jobs, but your job is literally destroying our even, planet. It's not even that. <clears throat> if Labour got in, they wouldn't have just nothing. I don't. I, I would honestly think not much would have changed. They would have been like, in terms of coal, they would have been like, we're going to start to look at new channels in terms of like putting a little bit more money, diverting some money from coal into renewables. You won't fucking notice. Maybe in 50 years you'll notice, but you'll be thanking us then. There is, uh, it's not that radical. No. Plus it won me over. I saw him being like, oh, I'm a coal miner. I'm like, man, go for the fucking... Yeah, I know. Yeah, you're right. What more do you people want? Uh, but honestly... I don't think that there is anything. I think it's just that they are rusted on national voters. Yeah. And they're just going to vote national. Right. Do they you think care the, about the, the next specifics. general elections... There is any possibility that that seat could go away from the nationals? Clearly no. not. Christ, no. There's but no way. Is that is that is that even important? Can we still win? <clears throat> yes, but the press would not have to make an issue of climate change. Uh, they would have to be focusing on something else, and they know that that is an Achilles heel for the Labor Party, so they probably won't. Um. I don't know what Scott Morrison is going to run on because in the eyes of the public, he's actually quite weak on COVID. And if he does run on COVID, it would be easy for the Labor Party to just point out how deplorable his record is. 
So they might actually just run purely on climate change. Of They're taking your jobs. How many jobs did you destroy in the last term? I, mean, I have a feeling that he's not going to run on either of those. I think he's going to run on um, the same <laughs> thing that Malcolm ran on, which is jobs and growth. Jobs and growth, <laughs> the economy. Jobs and I fixed. Uh, it was, we were heading towards a crisis. There would have been mass unemployment. I made sure that that didn't happen. And you can see the results. This is what he's going to say. And the economy is now booming. Mm. I well, you know what, what I honestly think is the way that Labor wins the next election? And I think that all the people that are constantly saying to me, how do I get my liberal voting parents to vote Labor? It's not going to happen. What you do instead, if you have liberal voting parents, you just pull the old thing of, uh, they're putting Greens up high. It's a, it's a Greens liberal coalition, so they might vote for an independent, which takes some of the pressure off the Labor Party. That's the best tact to go for your liberal voting parents. But I think the other thing is, you're thinking too small. There's so many people that just don't care. What I want from every one of my subscribers is for them to convince one person to vote Labor. Just one. That's the election won. If you cross over 500,000 people to the Labor Party... True, dude. You've won. Yeah, and so, I, and the whole thing is that most of the time, the reason that the Liberals win is because just no one cares about the upcoming election. And so they just go, eh, and just chuck in whatever. Is that true? I'm Look, man, we were listening to Talkback Radio when we were in... Um, I don't know where the fuck we were. Driving between Lismore to um, no, no, Gold Coast. To, oh, my bad. And... You, you heard what the opinion is. What the fuck am I talking about? They are... It's going to be hard convincing these people. They are very hell-bent on some of their ideas. Well, what I think from listening to that is... And this is a genius tactic, and we've got to start employing it. That's how Trump won in 2016. He just listened to talkback radio for a week and started speaking about not what the polls were saying, what the people were actually saying on TalkBack. That's how Howard was in for 12 years as well. He credits it to the fact that he never paid attention to the polls. He used to just walk around in malls and feel how many people were avoiding eye contact with him. <laughs> it is and a shame that there's no pink sprinkles left at the Donut King shop. This is unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'll get to the still, bottom. Of it. They do a good service, though, and they are a small business. So, so I'll, I'll stick to the chocolate sprinkles, but I have my reservations. Here's a silver lining, though. <laughs> Here's one silver lining, which I think might help you. Um, did you check out the results of this ABC survey? They did like the survey asking people. I even did the survey, and like a whole host of. But the, the things that are important is that most Australians, by an overwhelming majority of them, believe these two things. One, that if a politician lies, they should be kicked out, irrespective of the context. Second, that there needs to be a very strong corruption watchdog on politicians. So, people care about corruption. Man. Yeah, they do. And I think that permeates through. So, if we can convince them that the Liberal Party is more corrupt... Yeah, look, this is Wait what I'm saying to my audience. Wait a sec, what a sec. Saying, Can you make a video that tailors to my friend? No, I can't. I, <laughs> I've given you all the information you need to convince your friend. You have to use your own words to convince them. Mm. But I think that, as always, it's just because you are in a passionate argument with a Liberal voter. But you just have to remember that their primary vote is not really higher than the Labor Party's. The... the the press obviously is always focusing on the fact that uh, uh, Labor's primary vote is down. Yeah, but they need the Nationals and the Liberals to get into power. Uh, they really have about 30% of the population, like Labor has about 30% of the population in their pocket. You are trying to aim for that 40%. That's it. And like I'm saying in the stand-up show, every time public interest goes over 40% in an upcoming election, the Labor Party wins. So all you have to do is just inform a couple of your dead shit friends. That's it. What the press hasn't mentioned is that this was National's lowest first preference vote ever in the upper house. Lit boy daddy do says. <laughs> yeah, lit boy what daddy What a source. <laughs> this is a sick source. What do you say to that? I say lit boy daddy do is lit. Yeah, but that's good news. I guess that's good news. Well, yeah. look. All of those little finicky things of, uh, you know, the vote's down, like... Uh, doesn't matter. They won. A win's a win. They're true. Um, but how do we also convince people of this? That 
Look, on one hand, you look at like uh, the the whole climate change issue as, oh, we have a lot of coal. If P- if world moves towards renewable energy, then we're not going to be able to export that coal and we'll be poor. But you know what is also true? All of the minerals required to fuel this new renewable revolution, they all are in Australia. Ungrown. So we all, like the future is amazing. Like we, once again, we're the lucky country, <laughs> even in this context. So how do we convince people that the future is bright? I don't think that you can convince, you can convince people that listen to this podcast that because they already believe that, but you're not going to convince people that Wait don't Wait a second, I'm not that. bloody convinced. What are you talking about? Well, like, most- let's just think about this <laughs> into like your... Uh, your your mate Gus and I'm a huge fan of Gus. He's one of my most favorite people on earth. He's legend. a very sweet man. Yeah, legend. He's seen two of my shows now and come out being like, "Yeah, yeah give the bastard hell." Who are you voting in the next election? Well, liberals, obviously. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, I don't know so that. I haven't asked gonna... him. That's not necessarily true, but but it's more likely that that's going to happen, right? So I don't think that you should be convincing those people. You shouldn't, I think, the exact opposite of what you think, Ali, which is that you should just be talking about climate change. I think that you shouldn't talk about it at all. I think that you should be focusing on what people already believe. You find what people think and then you tailor the message to what they think, which is they don't like corruption. I mean, look, New South Wales Liberals are a mafia. We have so many videos available of their corruption in extensive, irrefutable detail. You can just inundate the people with that. Another one that we saw that people just kept ringing up over and over about, and I think this trumps tax, migration. The Liberals' uh, record on migration is atrocious. They doubled it, and then they halved infrastructure. That's all you have to say to anyone that ever says to you, oh, migration is just going crazy. Liberals doubled it. They halved migration. No, you want to vote for that? Oh, sorry. No. So they halved infrastructure. Yeah, well, that's what you should be talking to them about. Out. Don't yeah. talk. To, don't talk to someone who is a coal miner about. No, you'll get a better job in renewables. Yeah, and that's kind They're of not fair going to think that. Huh? To say like that's not even a tactic. It's like kind of. You know. I mean, you're not lying. You're just like not. Look, man. Whatever. But that's what the press does. This is what you have to understand. The press is not giving you the facts. They are focusing your attention on an issue, an issue that they think serves their masters. And because that's all they talk about, that becomes the issue. You just have to draw that person's focus away to what they care about and show them because on every single metric that you could possibly choose, anything that that person cares about, the Labor Party is going to have a much better record on it. They care about jobs. They care about migration. They care about growth. They care about... I, I don't know, nurses, whatever. <clears throat> if you do care about that. Frankly, I think that like... Arts and nurses, first thing to go. Arts and nurses need to go. All right. Um, well, look, I'm, I'm on board, man. If you, don't, if, you don't want, if you don't want me to talk about climate change, I will not. Because I genuinely think, I don't know how to stress this enough, that... We are at like a very critical point and it needs to be said that we need labor to be guiding. Well, this let's be honest. Like we're liberals not, are, we're not running the world. The, the fact that Biden is, I think, well, we are running Australia and yeah, look, the globally. world isn't no, but globally too. Like <coughs> Australia is in a position that it needs to make like really critical strategic decisions that would affect it's, uh, the world. I'm just saying it's good that daddy's gone the right way, dude. Well, what do you mean? Daddy? Biden. Oh, Biden. Is steering. Yeah, in the look, right no, Biden's all right, but like I'm talking but about. But that's what Australia. I'm saying. Like, I actually about am happy about the direction that climate action has taken globally now. I think that that problem has more or less solved itself. My issue, and always has been with Australia, is that we are missing out on the greatest economic opportunity in our history, arguably. In Well, at least at the turn of the century, because like with the previous fuel source, which was coal. We had 500 years worth of it that we could supply the entire world supply with. That was the 20th century energy source. And in the 21st century energy source, we could do the exact same thing. Well, I've got some good news for you on that. The private sector knows that and they are doing that. Yeah, exactly. Like, I know I know a friend of mine who works for like one of the biggest uh, coal companies in Australia. And he was saying that they are hemorrhaging inf- uh, investment in coal and they're putting it in other renewables and mining off other um, things like lithium and stuff that's going to be required for the green revolution. 
Look, lithium. I'm really batteries. Yeah, for batteries and shit. It's just going to solve itself that problem. Mm. Uh, having said that, market. my next stand-up show is all about the huge economic potential of renewables. So I don't know why I did that. Now I just got obsessed with it two years ago, and because of COVID, it's mm. just bad timing. But I'll still be doing that show because I can't be fucked to write another one. <laughs> but I think that you should only be listening to that to enforce your own opinions. But I. Th- think that you should not be trying to put that onto anybody else. Right, uh, I'll, I'll Biden did not run on that. Biden, was, his entire thing was, hey, no one's talking about wrestling the soul of America back until that, that was me, Jack. I was talking about America's soul. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get it. Look, whatever, works. whatever works. I'm yeah, on whatever board. works. Yeah, I'm on board. I have no <laughs> issues with, like, it just needs to be said. I'm not a Greens voter, so it's fine. But, yeah, I just think that it's... It's okay now. Okay, that that really did cheer me up and because you know I was what? very I depressed think that yesterday. The US have been making measures that will be irreversible. They have kind of put their economy in a place where it doesn't really matter if a Republican wins the next election. It doesn't matter if they win the next election after that either. Uh, the US will be meeting their targets because really, when it comes to renewables, really all you need is investment. And if you just get four solid years of that, the private sector can pick up after that. Right, yeah. Yeah? Shit, right. man. He's well, as shit. He, well, <laughs> that's what he does for a living. True. So You're pretty expe- good. He's an authority on this stuff. You'd be yeah, reading yeah, your yeah, SBS boy. Vice, I yeah. see. <laughs> Vice News. Vice yeah, Someone's got to do it. Yeah. You're, fuck. Why not me? I'm just kidding. He okay, reads Michael should Weston. we move on to our next segment? Unless there is something else that you want to add to this. I think you've been pretty comprehensive, but... What other... I have a question. So yeah, lithium, what else? What else is, what have we got? That's Man, good? there's so much stuff that it's all really scientific and technical that I can't know. But what I do know is that all the minerals that are going to be required, <coughs> we've got them here. Really? And like, there's a few other countries that also have them. But we have very large deposits of them as well. And I'll add this. If you want to talk about environmental matters, when it comes to Australia, you should be talking about conservation. I think just forget about climate change entirely and shift it to the mass spatial extinction and the huge amounts of land clearing. That is true. That does get like a lot of... Because that's not politicised like climate change is. True. True. have been... Actually, the Nationals are facing a lot of backlash because... um, uh, recently, uh, in in actually where you kind of grew up around Coffs Harbour, there's um, they're basically saying that you, what's the act uh, the the Habitation the Protection Act? They're saying that it does not apply to certain national reserves over there, and they need it for logging. And they're getting huge opposition from like just the people around there. Yeah, like, and they steal one. Oh, they want shit. I don't know, but probably it's bizarre. Uh, well, I don't know, but like you are right. There is a. Uh, it, it permeates through party lines, people wanting to conserve the environment. Yeah, mm. and I think that, look, as we proved with causing the koala wars last year, this is an environmental issue that the Liberals are weak on. Mm. Uh, if you are able to get enough coverage on these two things, water corruption and land clearing, that's an environmental issue that you could probably get more people around. Mm. And that serves climate change anyway. You know what's really good for fighting climate change? Trees. Dude, mm. and also ecotourism is how much of an industry every year? It's 20 fun. billion just in New South Wales. Stick just that in, in your Wales. pipe and smoke it. Mm. And plus like... As opposed to the, what, 2 billion we get in mining royalties? That's crazy. That's, Actually that's less. Crazy. <laughs> Apparently uh, there was this new Independent Australia article that the stick forwarded it to me which said that um, the mining industry has been overstating the amount of taxes that they've been paying. Mm-hmm. We really like have a close chance. Close to 40%. I feel like we really do have a chance as a, as a planet to, to shift to this sort of like, uh, you know, utopian paradise where the main currency, <laughs> the, main, the main sort of economy is run on ecotourism. So everyone going to each other's countries. I mean, it ha- it's growing. It, I mean, obviously COVID put us a stop to that but like once it <clears throat> ramps up again just different countries traveling to different countries learning about their like indigenous forests and their awesome like landscapes and like sort of you know you can go to disneyland but not all the time and then we just go together and everyone uh learns how to make salami as well all- along the way it's just such a better look when i went to america last time i spent 
half of it in Disneyland and I spent half of it in the Caribbean feeding turtles. I enjoyed feeding turtles more. Yeah, I, dude. Then a billion dollar ride yeah. that I had to line up for for three hours as opposed to just going down there and just being like, hey, you want some squid, Skip? This guy's name Skip. He's a treasure hunter. <laughs> So much so better. So much better. You didn't have to go on the treasure ride, the pirate ride. You met a real life pirate. pirate. Also, I don't know about you guys, but have you been to a theme park recently? I get real dizzy now. <laughs> I still I'm, love I'm becoming Look, a I, boomer. Like I went on. Um, well, let's be honest. You have been smoking for a long time. <laughs> you I did love, try and I do love roller full coaster. breath just before the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I do love roller coasters. Give me, give me that vape. You, you shouldn't um, be touching this. But like, dude, I know it's very like. Where the bloody hell are ya? Of me to say this, but swimming with a turtle in Bali that I just found on my own is my Hey, I did that at the Great Barrier life. Reef. You did that? Swam with the turtle. I went scuba diving ha- and, and I met a, a giant turtle. It's amazing. Was it giant it? or was it about the size of your torso? Uh, probably the size of my torso. That's giant. What do you want about? No, no, the there's turtles what? are like three <laughs> meters long. Yeah, yeah, they can. Oh, yeah. But those true. are like in Galapagos. No. That's not near the Great Barrier Reef. <laughs> I don't think they're around anymore, dude. No, no, they yeah, are. Actually, enough. this yeah, one probably turtle. Just like, you know, uh, we really should go see a giant wombat. <laughs> <guy."> <laughs> <laughs> in that chair, just. Yes, yes, Mr. Jimmy. Let's wheel him out here. But have miss, you got they his, uh, exist. Have Giant you, uh, turtle uh, still uh, exist. Uh, <laughs> have you got his uh, punching bag? Yes, we do. There's just the clown with ScoMo space. He's like, he's got a sonnet. Pee-hee. Pee-hee. <laughs> All right, he's going to be sleeping tonight. <laughs> Pee-hee. Uh, this, is, this, this fucking thing. Christopher Reeves. Oh, but it so was Christopher Reeves. <laughs> but it was. <laughs> <laughs> I want to watch my cousin on who. Uh, what's that one called? With the cases? Uh, deal or no deal. <laughs> oh, deal or no deal. Jordan, that's not on anymore. Well, can we watch reruns? Yeah, yeah, yeah put what the tape in. The chase? Yeah, what happened to that? Poor Andrew. Huh? Oh, I now remember what happened. <laughs> there you go, there you go. Let's skip that one. I like that show. Um, Do you? I like Deal. I like Deal or No Deal way more than the Chase. No, no, no. Oh, you, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, well, was, as long as we got the riff. Absolutely, we're down to the nitty gritty. Okay, perfect. So, sh- can we move on to the next segment? And this one is gonna get me into a <coughs> lot of trouble. Hey, great. Be careful. Stop it. Don't smoke that shit anymore, dude. Don't inhale it. It's, it's strong. No, I did the cigar thing. That's what makes you cough. Okay. Oh, yeah, true, true. I put it in my mouth to taste the fruit. Well, that's what I Anyway, do. we're going to stop talking about vapes because okay. I think it's still illegal. But, okay, <laughs> it, it, um, the next segment is boy. about uh, the news that came today. The Belarus government hijacked a plane to get a dissident. Now, before we get into this segment, I want to first give a trigger warning and also want to make one thing very, very clear. I am not on board with hijacking. I am not on board with dictatorial governments putting oppositions <laughs> and dissidents in jail. So all of that stuff, in my opinion, bad, not good. <coughs> Jesus. <laughs> However, let's put that hat back on. What you guys <sighs> need is a little bit of context into what the fuck is going on in Belarus. Let's start with where the fuck is Belarus. Good question. That's actually one of the most important reasons why this context is required. So Belarus is a landlocked country in Eastern Europe. It neighbors Russia on one hand, Ukraine, uh, Poland, and uh, Lithuania. Ah, so more made up country. <laughs> but what, what the, it, it actually... It's that kingdom that Barbie lives in in her DVDs. <laughs> and it is. You go there, it is an old princess kingdom. <laughs> it a little it bit is. is. Yeah. Those Russian czar things. The, those <laughs> <laughs> Who needs Disneyland? <laughs> <laughs> Just as far. Just go to the torture chambers for a real run. <laughs> Well, that stuff is also true, but okay. <laughs> so uh, it's it's landlocked. It's sort of sandwiched between what we consider to be what uh, used to be like you know the uh, the unfree world and the free world. Basically, you have on one hand Russia and you have the Western powers on the other hand, and it's always been one of those buffer countries that throughout its history people have been fighting over, not because it has any particular resources, but because of its strategic value. Um, it's a, it's, you can march either way. So in terms of armies going on one hand, so Russia always wants to control it because they're afraid of, 
uh, Western Europe marching into Russia through there. And same goes uh, for the Western uh, powers where they don't want Russia to control it because Russia can come through. Still? Still. In the age of nukes. They're In the still age worried of nukes, about continental still. armies. You never know. Napoleon IV could rise in the middle <laughs> consolidating his power. But Dude, <laughs> you are on fire tonight. Keep taking these fucking naps. You're killing me. You're, like, you're killing me here. Having said that, <laughs> nukes, <laughs> nukes are always a last resort for military conflict. So um, you could still have conventional warfare without nukes. You could. You can. And you. ever since we've got nukes, we never have really used nukes, but we have used a lot of conventional warfare. In Europe? Well, not necessarily Muskets. in Europe, but in throughout the world, if you look at the different conflicts, some of them, like look at the Cold War. They were literally fighting each other in pretty much every country that they could get their hands on, but no one fired a nuke. We came close to it a couple of times, but not but really. That's the whole thing. They're all proxy wars. They're all between countries that didn't have nukes. Yeah, but those proxy arms. wars are also countries. And uh, and uh, what country were we talking about? Belarus. <laughs> That Lithuania. is also a very <laughs> a very viable proxy area where you could have wars, just like Ukraine is. So that's actually one of the points. So okay. we'll, we'll, I'll quickly give a very brief history of Belarus because so Belarus, bo- any power that gains any kind of prominence wants to take over Belarus because of its strategic uh, value. And so Poland used to have it at one point and at some point um, the Russian Federation took control of it. And... It all starts basically since the Russian Federation. When the Russian Federation uh, collapsed and the Soviets took over, uh, they've always tried to suppress any kind of Belarusian identity, which is happening till today, um, because they don't want they don't want them to they don't want Belarus to like have an independent foreign policy as such because they Russia wants it to be under their domain. So in the, during the Russian Federation, they really suppressed any kind of national identity until the, the revolution, the communist revolution. When the communist revolution happened in uh, Russia, they for the first time encouraged national identity within, uh, within Belarus because from the communist perspective, they wanted, um, they wanted them to basically fight against the Federation, the Russian Federation. So... Uh, Belarus for the first time started having some sort of a national national identity at that point. So the communists had an alliance with the nationalists mm. just to basically defeat the Russian Federation. Yeah. Poland and all these other countries on the other hand were constantly trying to take over Belarus as well but Russian Federation was too strong. When Russian Federation collapsed, then there was a fight between the the Soviets and Pol- Poland to basically uh, figure out who's going to take over Belarus. And the Soviets won that uh, war. Now, so all of a sudden, you've got the, uh, the Belarus that now, uh, for one of the very few first times, has some sort of national identity. <coughs> Belarus was basically backwaters of Europe. And people say it still is. Yeah, now it is, but not during the Soviet era. Belarus was just... It, was bas- it wasn't even literate. I think around... Um, Uh, when the Soviets took over, the the literacy rate in Belarus was like maybe 55% or 60%, which seems like a fair bit for that time, but compared to the rest of Europe, it was dog shit. So the Soviets basically started to, they took over, they took over Belarus and they started um, trying to industrialize it. And they did a pretty decent job at it. Belarus became... Uh, Well, this happens around the 70s, 80s, but the Soviets have industrialized Belarus a lot to the point where now Belarus is very industrialized. It has a decent literacy rate. However, it is economically very dependent on Russia. They use Russian uh, crude oil to basically fuel their industries and export some of the stuff. Russia, now, now what's happened is that Now we come to the the guy, uh, the the current dictator today. He is in a very tr- uh, has been in a very tricky situation because these great powers constantly pose a threat to him. He was trying to reduce his dependence from Russia, and he started courting other countries like um, like Mike Pompeo went there uh, in his last year That's to right. say that. Um, Uh, how about you get crude oil mm. from us? Mm. And that pissed off Russia. Mm. Russia didn't like any of that. And uh, Belarus, the dictator was basically trying to make sure that 
he's not too economically dependent on one country. And he was trying to like, you know, basically put his eggs in different baskets. But that sort of backfired. It backfired because there were these protests. So, sorry, one more point. Um, one of the things that happened to reduce his uh, dependence on Russia was that he started, in, uh, he started advocating for uh, Belarusian national identity, which seems basic, but it was very revolutionary in Belarus because you weren't even allowed to teach Belarusian language in, um, in, in schools. You were only taught Russian because they didn't want... What they were trying to avoid was... Uh, basically, the, the the society being split into on one hand you've got the Russian factions, and on the other hand you've got the Polish factions or other factions that are NATO supporting or whatever. So he wanted to basically uh, the R Russians wanted to keep it under their domain, so they never mm. encouraged their national identity. Mm. Recently, the Belarusian leader, until literally 2020, started encouraging teaching. <coughs> Belarusian language at schools and he was trying to increase his options what that did was that there were uh, the other thing that is happening is that Poland has become pretty affluent Poland is they're touting Poland to be the next country to join the first world and that soft power was permeating into Belar Belarus and basically that created a lot of factions within the within the country Belarus unlike other like Ukraine, for instance, has been very, very stable. And the oligarchy in Belarus wants to keep it that way. The way they see it is that we've, we've been pretty stable, we haven't had wars, and this country is, could potentially be a powder keg because of all of these different forces that would try to take over it and using different national identities to basically pursue their interests, make it a proxy, an Afghanistan-like situation where different uh, warring factions would be fighting against each other, which does not work well for the business, the oligarchy within Belarus that wants to keep having this dependence on Russia because Russia gives it subsidized oil that keeps their factories going and all of that stuff. So recently, when there were a lot of these protests, against the regime, which is very fair because the regime is very repressive. It's a very dictatorial regime. However, so is Russia. Uh, like, you know, it's, it doesn't come in a vacuum. It's, that's the what kind of- What do they do that's repressive? Well, you know, putting opposition leaders in jail. Uh, recently, this hijacking thing, what, what happened today was that there's this, um, basically a law, it's kind of like you. Imagine you were, imagine like Australia was a dictatorship, which it is. And you had imagine? to like, you had to move to New Zealand because you were afraid that you're going to be put into jail, which you probably might have to do pretty soon. And, I want to and you were flying from New Fuck. Zealand to Indonesia. What the Belarus government did was while it was flying, they sent a fighter jet and basically hijacked this plane, initially saying that there's a bomb threat on the plane and kind of forcing the pilots to land into Minsk, which is the capital of Belarus. And once it landed, they wanted to get this one uh, friendly Geordies like character and put him in jail. From their perspective, the reason why they're doing it is, well, well, one, because they're very repressive, but also because they don't want to flare up this powder keg because they know if, if things get out of hand, if the current status quo goes down, it doesn't mean that you're going to have a dem democracy. What it means is you're going to have a fucking civil war. And more influence from the EU. Well, you'll have more influence from the EU as well. So he kind of got freaked out by this whole situation. And then he again went back and said, okay, fine, we're going to just keep siding with Russia. The, he came up with this uh, yeah, agreement with Russia saying that we're not going to like, uh, we're not going to look towards EU and NATO towards any support. We're still keep giving us crude oil. But on the end, and basically Russia was saying, okay, that's fine. Uh, we'll do that. But then you need to like kind of crack down on these dissidents. Yeah. And so make things go back to normal. And that's what's happening right now. Yeah. So on one hand, it's really bad and everything. But on the other hand, the dictator, at least that's what I think, he's trying to avoid a civil war. And maybe you could argue that by uh, jailing a vlogger, you're not avoiding a civil war. But... And if they jailed Franz Ferdinand, no World War One. Well, <laughs> band, maybe, right? maybe. Yeah, obviously, mm -hmm. of course. Just clearing that up. Anyways, the, the look, I, I don't want to. I don't want to go into like the the merits of whether this was good or bad. But what I'm trying to say is that there's a context behind it, and the context is 
that Belarus could go from a stable dictatorship, not to a free democracy, but towards a Ukraine-like situation, but even worse. Because you have, so you've got like, um, you've got a lot of people in Belarus, contrary to popular belief, that really, really like the Russians. In fact, it was the only, one of the only countries that did a election for the Soviet Union not to collapse in, in the early 90s. Most of them wanted the Soviet Union to be there because the Soviet Union did really help them economically. Like, they industrialized and say them. what you will about the Soviet Union. They did educate their people. That's true as well. Like, they, um, they made it, they wanted Belarus to be, well, on one hand, yes, economically dependent on Russia, but they did that through mass industrializations, which did really, and literacy programs that did help Belarus, which is why till today, I would say a majority of people in Belarus would want to side with Russia. However, there's a big population, particularly in Western Belarus, that don't want that, that look at Russia as a declining force that is not being able to give them the kind of economic affluence that they want, and they're thinking that maybe West is a better way. Is it really that poor? Um, I think the average wage of a average Belarusian factory worker, which is, by the way, most of them, is $500 a month, which is low, but... Yeah, but, but Compared to Ukraine, living. Ukraine's average is $300 a month. Mm. And that's the free and fair country since the 2014 coup. So it really depends on how you look at it. Either way, there are big factions in Belarus that want to side with Poland. And then there is an even bigger faction that wants to side with Russia. And usually when you've got this kind of situation and there's a vacuum where you've gotten rid of this one dictator, you're gonna they're going to battle it out to see who wins. Of course. And that battle is going to be bloody. Yeah. So one of the argument is that he is trying to avoid that kind of civil war. But yeah. then the other argument is that he is doing that in a very, very repressive way that discounts any kind of human right. And both of those things are true. The Even the Russian government is asking the dictator of Belarus to find a pathway for him to introduce a new constitution and eventually step aside. So no one, even Russia, is for this one dictator staying there forever because it is like a North Korea-like situation. But the way Russia wants to do it is that, yeah, you introduce a constitution, you have a revolving door, but you always stick by us. I doubt that Belarus is the same as North Korea. I really think that it would be a completely different society and that, like, I, look, I don't know that much about it, mm -hmm. but... You know, it's not a hermit state like that. You can go to Belarus. Yeah, you can and take go to Belarus. Photos of the forest there. I think what they're basically trying to say is that it's also a dictatorship, which is true. Yeah, but and this is always their point. It's a dictatorship. Yeah, but what about the standard of living? What yeah, about it's not great. And like, rates? if you compare what? the standard of living to, for example, the adversary Poland, Poland is killing it. Mm. Their standard of living is much higher. But was it always? No, it recently got better, but. But credit where credit is due, they're killing it. Right, right. Um, and and a lot of uh, Belar Belarusian people or Belarusian people look at that and say, hey, how about we go with these guys and not Russia? But that kind of scares not only the oligarchy over there because it's uncertain what that economic future looks like, but it's also scary because there's a big population in Belarus that is not going to be for it. They, they think of themselves as Russian. And it, they've been told that they're Russian for like since they were born too. So there's a reason for it. What I'm saying is like, man, it's a little complicated. You're like it's a powder keg. This thing could go really bad. So you want an orderly transition, not haphazardly getting rid of the dictator because a few blog vloggers, rightly so, are saying that the the country is repressive. Yeah, but look at what happened when Russia disintegrated. Yeah, exactly. That was horrible. And that's just my point every time that they say these things. It's just like, look, just like these oppressive dictatorships are conditioned, their population, to think a certain way, so have we. That's what it's a just lot this of idea that you just slap freedom mm -hmm. on a, a country and then all of a sudden everything's fine. But, that's, you know, yeah. Russia completely, like, 
honestly, Putin did rise them out of the ashes out of that. They, they were a complete. Well, don't so don't say that, Putin. There's a lot of issues. That. There's a lot of issues true. with that. Yeah, too. but he's why? Because look, let's not get into that debate. But however, what you're saying is is actually, I would say, a majority opinion in Belarus in the sense that they say that okay. If you get rid of this guy, the last time that it happened was in the early 90s when the Soviet Union collapsed. And that was a net harm for us. They really liked the Soviet Union. And the Soviet Union particularly made an effort to help Belarus as well. So they look at it as like, okay, here's another structure that's going to go down and it's going to be a net loss for us. So what I'm saying is like, there's a lot of people in Belarus that agree with that. That they would rather not have a revolution so and they prefer about democracy and the ideas of freedom that's what they want maybe we should be listening to the populations of these countries as opposed but the population to just going, is split no 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 uh, what you really want is uh, a bunch of american companies coming in and McDonald's. instead of you controlling all of your resources they do that's freedom but there's a <laughs> there's a split not everyone in belarus agrees with that of course and they're that's why it's a powder agree cake. with it that's just no one ever agrees with anything. Yeah, it's just like if it's in a majority opinion. Well, and it seems like it's a I, huge. I don't know. Opinion. I don't know if it. I would assume that it's a majority opinion, but I don't have any polling. That's actually one of the problems with dictatorships that you're you're unable to get that sort of data. I'm assuming that it is a majority opinion, but but not by a huge margin. And that's the problem when you've got a society that's so split. You don't. If any kind of va political vacuum can be disastrous, and that's my argument essentially. So you should. I just think that as soon as that dictator goes, the entire country will just go into one of those free falls and end up like the Philippines. It'll end mm. up like Russia was. It happened in Syria was, too. Like that's a that's a very recent example where we thought if we get rid of Assad, everything's going to be all hunky dory. It's going to be democracy, but it went through its bloodiest civil war ever. And you ask any Syrian today. If it was worth it, mm. I'd be surprised if they would say yes, it was. Yeah. So there is there is that point as well. However, you don't need to hijack planes to do this. You know, that's that's another argument which I, I support. That it was pretty fucked up the way they did it. He literally sent a fighter jet mid air and said, "Bring it down." That's that's gangster. Mm. So I'm just saying that they're like they could have done it better, but it's always just this thing of like people just really need to understand that politics is a numbers game. You're thinking about the nation's interest, not about one person's interest. You know that could be endemic of something bigger, but it could also just be as what you're saying. It's like a greater good thing. Uh, Four sixty Sam is saying, Ali, what about the election loss that the dictator had? So okay, so that's. A point that Western media says. I'm not saying it's untrue, but I don't know if it is true. Because the way it goes is 80% of the population apparently voted for the dictator. And 10% uh, of the population voted for the opposition leader who now has to flee and live in, um, I think she Vegas lives in State. Lithuania. Damn it. Um, but so, and so the Western media is saying that that election was not free and fair, which is probably true. It's not free and fair. But that doesn't mean that he lost they're trying to paint it as everyone in the population did not like the dictator, but they forged these election results. I'm saying that they did forge these election results, but that still doesn't mean that he would have lost even if it was free and fair. There's a huge population in, uh, in, in Belarus that really wants to side with Russia. Just like it's... It All I think about is Rwanda, how they have, quote-unquote, free and fair elections. Um, they don't. Uh, that is a dictatorship as well. But that guy is painted as the president from a tribe that represents about 10% of the population that has won every single election since being elected. That's true. Paul you Kadam. know, it just, like, it, why are they telling you that? Well, because he sides with the imperial sides, forces. Exactly. You know, it's just... And by the way, just I on that point... Like if that guy is a fly in the US's ointment, they're going to paint it as, he lost that election. And it's true. Like, you know, interestingly, mm. just before 2020, 
if when the Belarusian uh, president was trying to court Western Europe, all of a sudden the media coverage wasn't that it's a bad dictatorship. Yeah, see. So uh, there, there are like economic factors that are playing into it. Anyways, I'm sure that I've confused you even more. But what I'm saying is like it's just an economic factor. I think it is just as you were saying before, strategic and resource factors. Yeah. Uh, from but what I'm saying is like, look, just just go read up on this issue if you are interested. Uh, hijacking was bad, but when you look into the context of the country, you'd realize that it's the answers are not so simple. Well, every Belarusian that I have spoken to, which is about five, back in the modeling days, <laughs> is your hat. <laughs> but they all hated him. And it suddenly hit me after a while that it was just like, well, they'd all be from the middle class. The middle class is always going to hate that guy. Yeah, there are sections that hate him, particularly the ones that live in uh, Minsk or Western Belarus. They don't like him. And if look, if they're like flying around uh, being models, they probably belong to a group of people that are not fan. But I would be you go to like Eastern Belarus and ask a factory worker, what do you reckon? You might have a different answer. Yeah, but I think that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I completely concur. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's. Like, look, I'm just always extremely hesitant of whatever the press narrative is about anything. Mm. I really think that if the press is saying something, you should err on the side that the exact opposite is true. Yeah. I, well, what I say is, like, look, the press is only telling you one side of the story. They are telling you what our interests are, and that's cool. We have certain economic interests, too, as being from the Western world. But if you really want to understand what's happening, then just look more into it. You will find different opinions on this issue as well. But having said that, no opinion, well, maybe like most opinions would not be for hijacking. So like I said, no one is pro-hijacking and jailing dissidents and opposition leaders. Anyways, uh, let's move on to a less crazy topic. Why do you think constitutional monarchies are better than democracies? <laughs> I'm sick of you having reign of this one. It's constitutional uh, monarchies on Wednesdays and the other one on Thursdays. There, I said it. No, it had to be said. No, I'm sorry. Miss Love, come back. Surely we can sort this out. See, this is the problem with democracy. Everyone gets a voice. <laughs> you have held me back long enough. I'm All right, sorry. I'm getting some tea. Uh, <laughs> Ali, you just talk about uh, why you like Pink Floyd for the next couple of minutes. Hey, Where? I mean, uh, something I can fucking chirp they're the out. only ones that are bringing down the wall. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, where the great. fuck did you guys fuck off? I really want to know what you're reading because Jordan's been reading this book. Hold up. No, I'm just getting some tea. I'm not, I'm not running away. Isn't this the nerdiest thing you've ever seen? What? This book where Jordan is reading. Yeah, dude. But come on. The the fact that this book exists shows how truly impressive Rome was. (laughs) Don't you reckon? Hold it up for me. There's a book about public opinion and politics in the late Roman Republic. This is an ancient society, and we have enough information to... Like, what, they're talking about... A 50-year period in this, on this really niche subject. It is pretty... Like... God, I like I, I just can't give them enough kudos. To quote <laughs> Marge, I just think they're nice. <laughs> <laughs> and you're, a, you know, that's very sweet of you. So what's that. what's this uh, what's this about? Why are why is it better? What are the strong points? Give us a brief of what oh, you've been thinking about. This is just an alternate history that I was reading about that was saying in World War One. I, I can't remember the monarch's name because you know don't. Quote me on like the the specifics of this. I'm just going to give you the general argument. Slim Jim Phantom. Slim Jim Phantom the first. That's Miss Love's contribution. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much for that, Miss Love. Sorry, uh, no wonder I didn't forget it. It's, it's just such a long name. The <laughs> you know, have a nice Anglo name, Jim. Jim. Uh, yeah. So Slim Jim, pretty much, he was working out before the US entered, a peace deal between the competing uh, powers in World War I. And apparently it was all going ahead. And the war was going to end years before it actually did end. And then the US decided, oh, no, hang on, we can sell a lot of weapons 
in this conflict and we can gain a lot of power and influence in Europe if we just sweep in. So they prolonged the war. Whereas the constitutional monarchs, because none of them wanted to be fighting, they all knew each other, and obviously it was their backyard. It was having obvious. It was World War One. I'll, I'll give you this right. Like it may have been a little bit better if it wasn't happening, and so <laughs> they. He was just coming between all of them, hammering out a deal that was going to save face for the Germans, for the British, for the French, and they were all on board with it. They were just kind of figuring out the details. Then the US swept in, the war was prolonged, millions more people died, and then the US had influence in European politics. And then they started pushing this notion of democracy. Why did they want influence in that? Why did they because like before that, democracy was pretty much an unknown, unheard of thing, really. There was a few countries on earth that were democratic. Uh, all of a sudden, this was all the rage. Wait, when was this? World War One. World War One, okay. Uh, this was all the rage, and he's just arguing that the reason that they wanted democracies is the same thing that I'm always talking about. It's just easy to corrupt them. It's easy to gain influence and to get what you want as a foreign power in that country. Whereas if you have something like a constitutional monarch network, uh, sorry, not a constitutional, absolute monarch network, whatever, like a monarchy, um, if you have a mon monarchic network in there, uh, there is an established power base that is there. Uh, you have channels of communication like you do, uh, it, like you did have in Europe, and those things just break down uh, as soon as you include all of these things. And that's kind of phase one of how an empire like the US works, is that they realise, oh, if we make all of these countries democratic, we can run an empire behind the scenes. We don't really have to have a military presence there. We can, and they do, but they can also just control a puppet who runs that country. That was a lot harder beforehand when, and like it would have been better for Europe. And the other thing that they were saying is if you had that constitutional monarchy in, you wouldn't have had all of these radical ideas like communism and Nazism running through and there you wouldn't have a world war ii uh europe would be in much better shape than it is today it really was an eu before that mm. you know mm. like it, all of these things have made europe a lot worse like having a second world war was not good for europe uh, the Cold War wouldn't have happened. So you're saying democracy, the idea of democracy. Is that what you're saying? The idea of democracy, as he's arguing, and I'm just, I'm really down this rabbit hole now where I'm just realising, no, I've just been conditioned to think that this is the best form of government. And when I kind of argue with people about it, they just go, well, as Winston Churchill says, you know, democracy is the worst form of government apart from all the others. Oh, well, that's a nice little Oscar Wilde-esque quip but I don't really think that that's true anymore. I think that there's numerous different little levels of politics and like other ways of controlling a country. And say something like China, for instance, when people say it's a dictatorship, as you know, that is a really gross simplification of how China works. Mm. It really is one of the most impressive governments, if not the Panthera, most impressive government. Panthera, 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 Panthera. It doesn't make them amazing, but you're, we're basically just talking about the efficiency. We're talking about the efficiency here, and we're also just saying, like, I honestly think that the reason that we're so pro-democracy is because we've been conditioned. And really, when you push someone... I'd like to be convinced otherwise, but honestly, every time that I do, you get very simplistic answers. Like, everyone has a say. If everyone had a say, I really don't think that Scott Morrison and Gladys Berejiklian would be leaders in Australia today. Dude, think about this. What if Scott Morrison becomes the fucking monarch? That would suck balls, man. At least we have hope right now. Yeah, but I'm saying that if it was like a pre-World War One scenario, Scott Morrison would not be the monarch. Well, Scott Morrison is a puppet for the US. Mm. He serves their interests down the line and of huge detriment to our own. He's completely like just destroyed trade <laughs> in this country. So what like, you're basically saying is that democracies are really volatile. As I think that they are designed to keep an oligarchy in power for as long as possible. And they do that very, very well. But what does and the alternative look like? Because I, okay, I agree with you in the sense that, look, the Chinese system, whatever is great, but I think it's great for them. I personally don't think it's great for us. 
Why? Look, yeah, because uh, look, we're imagine not, we're like not... telling our like Chinese do really fucked up, like not fucked up shit when they want to get something done. Like right now, they're building the biggest dam in the world, which is on the fucking highest mountain in the. It's one of the most un insane kind of uh, infrastructure project. However, and and they're able to do it because they can kind of muscle their way through. With us. I don't know if our population, all of us, would be on board for like. There's a lot of reasons why China. We, can. I don't know. All I uh, we're not to, that to, passive, to, is what I'm saying. To like, counter that, I'm just going to quote the Chinese restaurant owner in Lithgow <laughs> who said during the bushfires, "There will be no bushfire in China." They would say, "Everyone get bucket and put out fire." But there's a reason that's they a can, better system. But there's a reason they can do that. What? There's there's well, a lot of their factors. their population like like I they're said they're racially like, look, uh, they're, homogenous. This is cultural. Well, we're we're racially but I homogenous think that they have too. Set up but a system of government where okay, you can not like uh, you know the fact that they have dictators or whatever, but like, like those dictators have to go through a rigorous vetting process to even get to the position where they're dictators. Like, you, know, you have to start out as a block organiser there. Okay. That's the base level entry into politics. You actually have to have experience to get to where you are. Whereas here, you get fucking John Barillaro and he stays in for a decade and he'll probably stay in for more. That and is he's true. He's the dumbest cunt in the country. Like, again, like... In China, there is no way that a deputy premier of one of their states, their highest education level, would be a cert four that they didn't complete. Mm. But what he's maybe, saying maybe, is maybe it's that's not just transferable like that. It's not just like... Are you saying that we can elect a king? Like, well, how does no, look, that work? I, it's my point that I'm saying, which is that you think that you want more democracy. I don't think that you do. That is what crippled... Rome, and that's what moved into it being an imperial power, is that the whole point of a democracy is to just create all of these checks and balances so that the oligarchy can just influence it at any level and just stop one fulcrum there, and if that fails, and they've got another fulcrum that they can pull to get their way. Whereas, as I'm always using as a prime setup example, at least get rid of the Senate. Can we just democratize it to that level? We don't need two parliaments. I agree. Okay, okay. Yeah, you know, I, like we can at go the on board very least, well, there's we can things go. that you can do. And the thing is, like, uh, this might be different, different with this audience because they are actually politically engaged. But most people aren't politically engaged. Most people shouldn't really be in control of a democracy. A lot of the time when I speak to people about uh, politics, you know what a usual response of people that isn't this audience? It's too much thinking. I'm sure Scott Morrison's doing a good job. He's just had a hard run. It's they don't want to be involved in it. Okay, what For do the you... average punter on the street? What do they want? They want services. And what do you get under a liberal government? You have a system of bureaucracy that is thanks to the Stig actually has been giving me a lot of notes on this. The Stig. You you have a bureaucracy that is being uh, hollowed out from the inside. And what's the next stage after that? You get a country like Pakistan. Really, what divides a third world nation from a first world nation hey, 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 is the hey, bureaucracy. Hey. But you say it all the time. <laughs> I, like, dude, kidding, I honestly think Imran Khan, I think that if he had a competent bureaucracy in his pocket, he could be known Actually, as one of the greatest leaders of the 21st he makes century. A, he makes a very similar point from you. and and But except that he doesn't say that like me as king. He says because Pakistan's uh, political system is exactly like uh, Australia's, like it's the Westminster democratic system, and he says that we need to move towards a presidential system where you need to centralize authority a little bit more because See? my hands are tied. So you could potentially argue that for Australia, that if we move towards a presidential system, maybe we could uh, we could avoid some of these uh, the some of the volatility that exists within the structure. Yeah, I think that something that I'm coming to a conclusion to, and I hate labels, I don't even like using words like monarchy and democracy, but all I'm saying is I think China is a lot more democratic than you think it is, and I think we're a lot less democratic than you think we are. That's it's, true, but we, we should still make it make the point clear that we are less democratic than, we, than uh, you think we are, and China is more democratic. However, we are still more democratic than China, and that needs to be said. Yeah, 
Yeah, it, yeah. We, we still are. But which one gets better results? Well, that's a different point altogether. But there are other factors to that, but yeah. You, there is other factors yeah. to it. That's true. That's but all like I'm saying. The system of government that they have set up is truly impressive. But I, I still say for them, look, it, it's the same argument that a lot of these Western uh, uh, intellectuals make. Like, you, you, when they say like, oh, democracy should be everywhere. And then rational people go like, it's not a one fit policy for everyone. Every place is different. And that is true as well. Like you can't just tell China to be democratic. They have their own system and has developed over thousands yeah. of years. Yeah. However, we also have our own system that has developed over a long period of time as well. And I think we can't just adopt another system altogether. No, we can't adopt another system altogether. That's true. But look, the more that I've been reading about the late Roman Republic, the more you realize this, this is just history repeating itself. Like we are on a decline and what has happened with the bureaucracy in this country thanks to a democratically elected government, that's not going to be fixed ever. The culture has been changed. The uh, You're talking about millions of years of experience of how to run the government that has just been purged. Collectively, all of these experts that have just been completely outsourced to the private sector, this is not going to be fixed. The Labor Party might be able to put the manpower into these institutions so that they can run at some level, but they're not going to be running at the same level that they once did because you don't have those experienced bureaucrats teaching other bureaucrats how to be experienced. I'll give you another example. I was talking to a friend of mine who is a bureaucrat. I can't use any names. Um, but he had the opportunity to go up and be a senior bureaucrat. But he's in middle management, and he's in middle management by choice because he knows that if he goes up to senior bureaucracy, he's just answerable to the minister, and all they do is implement exactly what the minister wants. And what does the minister want? He wants exactly what the consultants want. He wants what that private bureaucracy wants, and everything that they want is fucked. Really, he is just saying that all we have become is publicly funded implementers of a private company's wishes. That's what the Liberals have done. And when right. he's in middle management, he can win some of the victories. That is a sad state that of is, affairs. That is pretty brutal. That is not what is happening in China. It's no definitely way. not an optimal system. That is true. But that anyways, is... we are out of time. Are we? Well, yeah, we can still go on for like five more minutes, but... I'm How just too afraid of this talk. Uh, nah. <laughs> Why? Don't be freak. Who gives a sh Come on, like Christ. Freedom of speech, think? mate. Look uh, it you, you, you can look it through. You can look through here. Miss Love, entertain the audience while Jordan goes through some of the comments. I haven't read that. Uh, okay. Well, I've got a question. How the fuck are you reading this? <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. Let me just read a paragraph. Problems could arise when the audience was already won over by the opponents. In this case, Cicero advised firstly to dismantle the argument that had captivated the people. Expressing perplexity and astonishment was another option, mixed with doubts about which part, to, part of the speech to attack first. This self-reliance would impress the listeners. Quintilian also worried about a judge won over by public opinion. He therefore suggested two ways to destroy, destroy those preconceived ideas. Number one. Fuck me. Uh, I think we've got a new Bible. What's the... We're going to have to start reading from that instead of <laughs> curling. Yeah. going to kill himself. Shit. What's the audience's... Because you read through some of the comments. What are their takes on this? <laughs> I don't know. It seems like they're kind of on board. Yeah, but this is a Twitch audience. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Fair, fair. I just, seven, dude, last, yeah. last point. <laughs> Moving on from I, this. There's a Twitch controversy. Apparently, uh, the Twitch guidelines say this is not related to anything, but the Twitch guidelines said that there can't be any nudity. However, yeah. you can wear a bathing suit in a setting that is conducive. Like, if you're at a beach, you can wear a bathing suit, but you can't just sit in your room and uh, be in a bathing suit. So, what a lot of these, uh, I'm guessing, Twitch thoughts, mm, thoughts that's the right word. came thoughts. up to the thoughts. Came okay. up to the uh, wait. Sorry, I, I'm. Anyways, I don't know what it's they called. They came up to the Facts. conclusion. I don't know what they that called. they can just sit in a hot tub because you're supposed to be wearing a bathing suit in a hot tub and do their streams. And that was getting very popular until Twitch demonetized the biggest hot tub uh, <laughs> Twitcher. You're kidding. Yeah, and so now there's this whole thing of like, uh, without even informing her. So there's this controversy. There are some Twitch Twitchers, I don't know if that's the term, that say, 
good because it was just getting a bit out of hand. These are just like this is only this is basically only fans, and this, it's not supposed to be like that. And then there's others that are saying, well, it's still like suppression of expression. And come on, and it's a good thing. They've got only fans. Not everything has to have tits and ass in it. Everything like yeah, but Twitch Jeff does. Huh? <laughs> Twitch needs that. Does it? Well, how else are they going to survive? I'm just really saying, guys, you've really dropped the ball. How have you demonetized that and not demonetized this pod? <laughs> <laughs> you really have to step your game up here. Panthera. Uh, no, that is... Uh, f- yeah, I, I guess you're right. Maybe that's the... Can't there be a Twitch that's called, like, Twitch, Public Opinion and Politics in the Late Roman Twitch? And it's just like you're only allowed to read... Like, like you're allowed to read this, and if someone says but, it just goes... Eh, eh, and then some like Twitch playing come and go oi 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 and they knock you ahead with like a baton. That's a better world. <laughs> See, this is what this whole podcast was about. Imagining a better world. <laughs> but I think one of the other one of the <laughs> oi, 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 one oi. of the other problems <laughs> was that <laughs> Right. <laughs> who said bottom? Who did? Well, I'm gonna knock your bottom now, I am. <laughs> Uh, the other part was like how Twitch never communicated that these concerns to her before demonetizing her. Apparently, well, that's very cheap. They just went straight up and did it. And then there were th- the other point of view was that yeah, they did that to her, but how many people got saved? So now all of these hot tub streamers now know that it's not okay. Yeah, look at that. See, it's the same situation in Belarus. <laughs> same situation in Belarus. It is the same. Message. It is exactly the same situation. Yeah, you're right. Pretty much. Like, I understand why. I always was wondering why are nerds so obsessed with these little demonetization laws? But that is it. They're just... They're metaphors for, like, the world. They're metaphors for Belarus, at least. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, you're not wrong. Jordan, I mean, respond to this. One of the comments was, uh, Jordy's has been uh, brainwashed by Chomsky. <laughs> Guilty as charged. <laughs> look at how I dress. <laughs> for Christ's sake. Uh, look... Uh, Do I need to defend the point? Yeah, true. <laughs> hey, yeah. I'll tell you this though: I'm getting deprogrammed by Chomsky and getting reprogrammed by Parenti. Michael Parenti. Mm. Yeah, he's getting he's so you're going down the line. So you're going more extreme. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> that, right. that's, that's one that you know really got banished by the media. Fuck. That's the new model for me. Do you know Pastrami who else? Pastrami Chomsky. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, mm. John Pilger was recently. I was watching one of his interviews, and he was talking about a lot of woke shit too. Who? Was well, he? sorry, not non woke shit. Not the, the, that definitely one, not the woke shit. Thing. He was he was yeah. talking about like how woke shit. he was basically siding with China <laughs> straight up. Yeah, he's he's into that. <laughs> hey, he really does like Camus it. Camus the only thing that I don't like about him is he also gives the Labor Party a hard time. Can't you just come on? Yeah, like, they also. Do you know? I didn't even know he was Australian. Who? What did you think he was? I, well, I've never like I I've only read him, so I didn't know until recently when I saw him in an interview that I, oh shit, he is Australian. You should know that just by looking at his face because that is a man that should have spent his entire life in Byron Bay just by a weird True. fluke. True. Yeah, went to Cambodia. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. His family vo- <laughs> his family votes nationals, but he went really opposite because he hated it. Camus seventy seven knows us too well. Just said. Order, this is just telling us what to do. Order your Uber Eats for the up late now. What are you having? <laughs> Funny hey, story. Yeah. Hey. Funny story. We He's already, already done did. It. We Pre-ordered. Already did. And we're having halal snack packs. Mine won't be halal, but uh, I made a specific thing of like, I want my cow to be slaughtered face in the bloody west, not the east. <laughs> uh, but yeah. We're all having a healthy fucking... Even this guy. This guy, I don't eat meat. No, I never eat meat. Halal snack pack for him as well. He is probably I mean, the non-halal best. Snack His, pack. Jordan's diet is pretty cool. That he is basically a vegetarian, except when he, goes he wants to eat meat. Yeah, it fucks me over because like I just don't... I just eat okay. And he's like, all oh, you can eat pizza hut tonight. I'm like... If I can pack but that he, on top of a kebab, and I'll yeah, try. But he's no, been look, having fat salad. dyke on crack. Nah, you, you're off the you're off the favoured list. Why? Nah, that's done. What happened? Why? It's pathetic how much of Jordan's opinions are direct copies of Chomsky. Noam Chomsky would not be advocating going back to monarchies. <laughs> 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 Noam Chomsky is an anarchist, and also not the worst person to be brainwashed by. Like he is yeah, a I very know. respectable individual. Jordan yeah. is the modern Jean-Paul Marat. Marat, who's that? Well, I don't know who that is. So thank you very much. Actually. That's very nice of you. 
Let's pretend he said John Paul Jones. Um, look, I think we've done pretty well. I think we've covered everything from Belarus to Rome. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that covers the entire world. <laughs> it's one small step for geography. One giant leap. Well, it's not even that much of a giant leap politically. <laughs> no, it's not. It's a leap for for uh, for some for, for policy. Now we talked to about a certain degree. We talked about Pakistan a little bit too, so we've covered the world. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there you go. All right, do you want to guys? You guys want to say goodbyes? Good uh, goodbye, everyone, except Fat Dyke on crack. <laughs> uh, I really enjoyed your company today. Thank you so much for making just eighty five percent of the comments paying us out. That's <laughs> not, bad. <laughs> yeah, not bad. Wait a sec. Jean-Paul Marat was a radical journalist during the French Revolution. Mm, interesting. That's pretty good. Yeah. You're walking around with a bloody wig on, eating soft cheese, I assume. I don't like the cheese part, but I do like the, the wig. wigs. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you guys for joining us today. Uh, hopefully, we'll see you next week. Oh, unless come on. You'll see us next week 100%, but we'll say way sketchier shit. <laughs> Bye. Sign up see to the uplate. Oh, yeah. yeah sign, sign up to the uplate. Patreon and all that. Bye.